today is yin and this practice the theme is patience and i always get a little worried asking for patience is always a problem for me because then you get it so we'll see how this goes today it's going to start with some movement and then some breathing and then we're going to move into our yin poses and we will stay progressively longer in the in, from one pose to the next, building up to a six minute sphinx pose. Now don't be worrying about that ahead of time. You always have permission to come out of your pose, take a break, come back in, choose a different one. You all have that permission at all times. Remember that. So then, so we're going to be curious about our stamina and our patience and how we mentally deal with slowing down. So let's just take a deep breath <laughs> and we'll begin with just some seated movements of the spine just to see how we feel this morning with hands on the knees. Your legs could be in any position that you love, anything that works, even sitting on a chair. We're just going to take a deep breath, let the chest rise, the shoulders roll back. <sighs> feel free to open your mouth, wiggle a little bit, breathe out and then gently twist. One hand comes behind, one hand crosses over, and we inhale up into that heart again. And as we soften on the exhale, we can turn back to center, take a breath in the middle, long spine. Soften on the exhale, and then take the other hand back, cross the other arm over, inhale in the twist. Softening back to center with the exhale. Good. And we're just going to start to walk our hands forward. Those of us with any kind of spinal issues, whether that is pinched discs or osteoporosis, we're going to keep our spines long and flat. If that's not a worry for you, you can let yourself sink forward. You can let your hips roll up off the floor. You can kind of roll up onto your shins. Take a breath and slowly walk yourself back up. And we're gonna make those big circles through our hips, drawing a giant circle on the ceiling in one direction a few times. And then going in the other direction. This practice today is taken from a beautiful new book called The Language of Yin by Gabrielle Harris. And it is full of beautiful things. She calls this pose Sufi circles and I like that you can picture a Sufi a guru sitting in the dirt <laughs> making some big circles good come on back to center and just lean over to one side nice long side stretch really allowing the hip that you're leaning away from to sink into the floor watching and feeling your breath switching to the other side whenever you like Just noticing what that stretch feels like for you. Maybe a little quicker on each side one more time. And then we'll work into our shoulders. I'm gonna take my hands behind and link my fingers and bend at the wrists. You don't even have to straighten the legs, especially if your shoulders don't like it. I'm gonna start, did I say legs? I meant to say arms, straighten those arms, open the chest if you want to. As an option, you can lean forward again, coming all the way toward the floor to a block or let your forehead come down. But that's not important, you can stay up quite high. <laughs> Take a breath in and then on the exhale, open the arms and wrap them gently into eagle arms, crossing the elbow, twisting the arms like a soft rope and just settling into the stretch in the shoulders with a breath. And we'll slowly unwind, look down, make sure you get the other arm on top next time. We're gonna reach behind us again, maybe a tighter, more st opening stretch or a looser one, up to you. Opening that heart and then crossing into our eagle pose, other arm on top, twisting up those arms with a breath. Final piece of our sequence, the palms come together at our heart and we just gently twist toward one knee and then toward the other, twisting from the core and relaxing to the center, wiggling the fingers and laying all the way back on your back for our breathing. We're gonna be doing a three-part exhale. I love this idea. It really helps us to focus on the pieces of the breath. 
So as you lay back, you might put a blanket under your head. You might put a blanket under your hips. You might just lay flat on your floor. It's just up to you what feels right. As you settle in, you can keep your knees bent, letting the legs stretch out if that feels better. Just pausing to let your body settle and then beginning to notice your breath. I love this quote from um, a yogi named Krishna Macharya. He says, inhale and God approaches you. Hold the inhalation and God remains with you. Exhale and you approach God. Hold the exhale and surrender. So we're gonna be comfortable and take a deep breath in and then sigh the breath out. <sighs> Begin by taking a relaxed breath in to fill your lungs and at the top of the breath, enjoy a small pause. As you exhale, gently let the breath out in three parts. Let the breath out of your throat and then your chest and then your belly, pressing it all the way out. And then inhale to the top, filling up, enjoying a small pause at the top of the inhale, and then breathing out one third, then two thirds, then all the way out. Feel free to do that a few more times. Just inhaling gently, lovingly, pausing at the top of the breath and then letting go of the breath at the top of the chest the middle of the chest and the belly in three pieces. And I'm just gonna let you rest here, enjoying this breath at any time. You could choose a different one or just focus on your belly breathing. Feel your body relaxing as you let go of those exhales. And then let go of the breathing technique. Feel free to begin to rock your knees and lift your hands into the twisting of the wrists. Just noticing how these little joints feel this morning. You can add a little stretch over the head with your arms as you rock those knees. You could also stretch the legs. Just a gentle movement as we come into our very first pose. We're only going to hold this pose for one minute. We're going to slowly draw the knees into the chest into our child's pose on our back. You can keep the knees in quite tight or you can let them be slightly up. It's all good. Just breathing into that belly that has a little bit of a squish in it. <laughs> just seeing how that feels for you today. I'm just gonna read to you while you rest in your child's pose. And you could choose to do child's pose on your knees if you prefer that. So child's pose on your back, child's pose on your knees. Let's talk about patience. Patience isn't waiting or being static, but moving in harmony with the speed of nature and what life is presenting to you. Patience isn't waiting or being static, but moving in harmony with the speed of nature and what life is presenting to you. That makes me think of when I'm sick and I don't have the energy to get things done or even to get out of bed sometimes, that requires patience to move at the speed of nature. <laughs> Let's just take two more breaths here. And that's our minute. Slowly let your feet float down to the floor, rocking the knees side to side, just gently allowing the low back to reshape itself. You might find a few pelvic tilts with the knees in the center, rocking the low back up and down a few times. As usual, our yin practice today will focus on our hips, our low back. If at any time anything causes you pain, please come out of that shape. What we want to find instead 
is just a slight discomfort, a sensation of a stretch. Take another breath or two, and then move slowly into your supine butterfly, staying on the back, walking the soles of the feet together, letting the knees open wide apart. You could slide blocks underneath the outer legs if you want some support. You could let your arms rest by your sides or do a double butterfly, tucking the hands in behind the head, the elbows wide apart, breathing right into that beautiful open chest, rib, and lung area. We'll be here for two minutes. The Buddha taught that patience is sitting in the present moment with dukkha. Dukkha is a Sanskrit word that means hardships. Without expectation, fighting, or ignoring. Quite a challenge. Let me just read that again. The Buddha taught that patience is sitting in the present moment with our hardships, without expectation, fighting, or ignoring. We can't be patient by hiding our impatience or trying to be patient or wanting patience. Everything happens when it's ready to happen. Not when we want it to. And everything takes time to evolve and grow. Everything happens when it's ready to happen. Not when we want it to and everything takes time to evolve and grow. We've been here for almost a minute and a half. Let's just count our last four deep breaths here in the pose, sending that breath down into the belly. Enjoying that butterfly stretch across the hips. Slowly let your arms come down and walk your feet onto the floor as your knees rise up. Take your time to rock side to side. And let's start to think about which option is best for us in our unique bodies today. I want to do a staff pose of some kind, also called caterpillar in yin. So one option is to take a strap and stick your legs straight up in the air with your strap, helping to kind of draw those toes closer to your head. You can have a little bend in the knees, a, a big bend in the knees. This is a big hamstring stretch. Now, if this feels like it's not gonna be much sensation for you today and you have no osteoporosis issues, then you might consider rolling to one side coming up and folding forward over your long legs this morning. This is our caterpillar seated. Either one of these is an option for you today as we rest in this pose for three minutes. So you see how the first pose was one minute, the second pose two minutes, this is three minutes. And if you prefer at any time, you can switch from lying on your back to seated or vice versa, laying back, settling into that stretch and just noticing what is happening in your body as you're stretching this morning. Keep breathing deeply. And we'll start the thoughts about our yin praxis today with this page about themes of the tattvas. Tattvas, T-A-T-T-V-A-S is another Sanskrit word. It means guidelines or principles. And we know these pretty well by heart. Coming into the pose, adjusting the shape until you feel sensation in the target area. So think about this pose for yourself. What is the target area for you? Maybe it's your glutes, maybe it's your hamstrings or your calves or even your feet or your arms. 
And then secondly, the yin practice is functional. You are not meant to look like the person next to you. Rather, you are expected to feel sensation in your own body. Find some stillness in your shape. This could be in the physical body, in the mind, or in the breath. Linger in the pose to investigate, to heal and transform. Stay away from two, stay, stay away, no, stay in the pose anywhere from two minutes to 10 minutes. And then come out of the pose with care, taking gentle movements or lying in the rebound, which we do. These guidelines are an antidote to busyness, stress, and rush in our lives. By adopting the soft, releasing, and still tendencies of yin on the mat, we are more easily able to utilize them in our life off the mat which is my hope and my intention as someone who practices yin with a lot of love. And we just have about two more deep breaths here. Start by softening the arms, the hands, letting the straps slide away as the knees begin to bend. Feel free to rock with your knees drawn in to your chest for a moment, and then settle the feet on the floor as you continue some gentle movement, eventually stretching those legs out nice and long on the mat if that's working for your low back. If you had chosen to be in a seated position for that stretch, you would just simply Find your way onto your spine, opening up into the resting pose of Shavasana. And let's just breathe here, noticing the energy that's moved in the body and breathing naturally. Take another really deep breath, pulling the air in through your nose, and then when you're ready, let it out through your mouth. <sighs> Wiggling the fingers and the toes, starting to move gently, maybe rocking the knees again, as we move into our half happy baby. So of course, there's this option on our back, just drawing one of the knees in toward the chest, opening it up wide to the side, and you might just hook your hand behind the knee, grab onto that thigh and squeeze it toward the chest, or you might grab inside the foot or outside the foot, whatever works for you. And the other leg can simply be bent and maybe opening wide, or it could also be stretched out. And you might stretch it out for a while and then rebend it. It's kind of up to you. Now, if you would like a much deeper challenge and you're up for it today, you could move into your dragon pose from a kneeling position, walking that right foot forward into the lunge with the knee down, the blocks under the shoulders, settling in for a four minute, a four minute stretch, you guys. It's getting pretty big here. So of course, if for any reason you need to come out of the shape, if it gets too intense for you, because we often practice two minute holds in our practice here in Divine Journey Yoga. But I thought we'd try today since we are testing our patience. So it's kind of up to you whether you are in a lunge on your knees or a lunge on your back. Settling in, remembering those beautiful principles, allowing yourself to be unique and take care of your beautiful body this morning. So here's those principles kind of broken down for us. This is about comfort and ease. Life is a balance of holding on and letting go, says Rumi. 
When we first enter our pose, we make micro changes to find a position that is comfortable and effective. Stillness is not a commandment in yin. The practitioner learns to play their edge as the pose develops. A subtle resetting of the limbs can have a powerful effect on the transmission of energy. As the tissues limber and soften, so does the sending and receiving of the mind. Every day we have a chance to make subtle changes. The way we speak to someone or the way we pause before we respond. The way we decide to give or serve instead of taking or the decision to let something go instead of latching on more. Each of these small sea changes add up to who we are and a signpost that your spiritual practice is working. And then one day when we think nothing is happening, we catch ourselves giving, smiling, and letting go. We remember that the journey is not so much about the big choices, but the small, unseen actions, changes we make day to day. We've been here for about two and a half minutes. We are gonna try to stay for four, but I want you to have permission to move when and if you need to, coming out when it gets too intense and then trying it again. Also, you might change into a figure four. Instead of the open wide, you might cross the ankle over and then move back into your happy baby again. Explore each pose as a physical gesture of comfort and ease. Move around as much as you need to, to find ease in your posture. Make micro changes to find more space. What small shifts can you make in your actions, speech and thoughts today so you can live a day in ease? We have about 30 seconds left in our four minute hold. So you might take four or five more deep breaths here. Slowly start to let go of that leg, moving carefully and kindly out of the shape. Feel free to re-bend the other knee. If you've been on your hands and knees, then you're just going to settle over onto your hips and find your way back onto your back to rest, to rock, to allow the body to ease itself out of that deep stretch into relaxation once again breathing and allowing yourself to feel to notice what's going on in your beautiful body you might also take note of your thoughts that was a long hold <laughs> did you have thoughts of anxiety if so is there a way that you can Take care of yourself, maybe simply by breathing deeper or simply coming out of the shape. You can always prepare for the next side. <laughs> and when you're ready, you can add in those gentle movements once again, bending the knees and rocking. Feel free to bend the elbows, move the arms a little bit. As we slowly get ready for the other side of our half happy baby or our lunge on our knees, whichever you choose. If it's happy baby, the knee comes in, we open it up, we might just hold on to that under knee part, the foot can flop or it can stay up, we might grab the toes, the outside of the foot, it's all good. As you choose what to do with your other leg as well, allowing yourself permission to look different on this side. And of course, if you are coming into that really deep hip opener, on your hands and knees that we call dragon in the end you're going to bring that other foot forward into the lunge and then prop 
your hands on those blocks and begin to soften. Noticing your breath, allowing your body what it needs, maybe a gentle rock or a readjustment, finding that space, those micro changes. As we move into our ideas about alignment and refinement or align and refine, how you feel is your indication of your alignment or misalignment with who you are. That's a quote by Abraham Hicks. How you feel is your indication of your alignment or misalignment with who you are. Every body is different. Bones are different lengths at different angles. And they make up the puzzle of who we are. The shape of the body is not as important as the shape of the mind. Respect for the individual and uniqueness of the way people's bones are put together personalizes our experience of yin. We all know what feels right and what feels wrong. We know the feeling of not being in alignment. Now misalignment takes many forms. It could be a nagging pain that we keep trying to work through. It could be a habit that doesn't benefit us, but we keep revisiting. It could be a thought that has taken up residence in our mind. Maybe it's in a job or a relationship that we tolerate each day but not entirely live. When we align, our life feels good as if we are on the right path. Alignment matches us with our inner wisdom and the wisdom of all consciousness. When we align, our life feels good as if we're on the right path. Alignment is a celebration of our uniqueness. Nature and life will conspire to show you this path if you listen and flow, follow the inner wisdom of your heart. Keep breathing, softening, allowing yourself permission to move when you need to. We've been here for almost two and a half minutes in our four minute hold. To come into alignment in yin posture means to find a position that suits your unique body structure. When we're not aligned, we may feel discomfort, we may cause injury, or the pose may not have the desired effect. Alignment feels easeful and light. Move back into your slow, deep breath. Perhaps enjoying again that pause at the end of the inhale and again at the end of the exhale. One more breath. And slowly allow yourself to come out of the pose with care. Especially if you've been on your knees, you're going to take your time. Intuitively folding your body into a position where you can get onto your back. <laughs> and rest. Feel free to just be still as you lay back or rock or stretch. Following your own heart, your own path. Maybe taking a moment for gratitude 
perhaps a little bit of amazement at what your body can do. Also, a little bit of gratitude for the permission to not go too far, to not cause pain. Whenever you're ready, if you haven't been moving, feel free to bring the knees into a bent position or even pull them in toward your belly, massaging that low back. For our next pose, you can choose to take a figure four shape on your back, or you can come into pigeon pose, also called swan on your knees. Now remember, <laughs> this is going to be a five minute hold. Maybe as you start to think about your figure four or your pigeon, choose which you feel is more sustainable for you. If you're deciding to stay on your back, then maybe you would grab a block and place one foot on the block. I'm gonna put my left foot on the block, let the knee be slightly open. And then I'm gonna take the other ankle in front of the thigh and just maybe add a little opening pressure on the inside of the knee. And this could be my five minute figure four. Very gentle, very doable. Perhaps you would prefer to draw the knees in toward your chest, maybe holding the, the foot and the knee that's in front of you, increasing that sensation on the outside of the hip. If your arms feel long enough and strong enough, you might link the hands behind the thigh, sliding one hand between the legs, and hold them here. Okay, if you would prefer to have your pigeon pose on your knees, then you're gonna come up, turn over sideways, come to hands and knees, and then drag one knee I'm gonna take my left knee toward my wrist or my thumb, and then let the other foot swing over. Walk the long leg back and maybe place a blanket or a block under my hip as I sink down over onto that front bent knee hip. And maybe I'll stay up for a while. Maybe I'll slowly walk myself toward the floor, placing a block under the head. Totally up to you where you wanna go with this shape this morning. You could even sit in a zigzag pose, just getting that slight opening in the hips. Whether you're on your back, seated or on your knees, take that gentle inventory as you, deep, as you deeply breathe and ask if there's anything else you can do to help yourself feel more comfortable. Feeling over form target area. Okay, let's talk about this. So target area yin practice sets yin yoga apart from aesthetic yoga. I love this. Aesthetic styles of yoga concentrate on how a pose looks. Functional yoga aligns the body to serve the intention of the pose. There may be multiple target areas in any one pose. Let's take this figure four, for example. The first target area is the hip of the bent knee, right? The knee that's in front, that hip, the outside of the glute is getting the target area stretch. But what about the thighs? What about the, the knee joint itself or the arms as they get involved? All of those things are part of that target. As the physical sensation morphs, the target area may shift. The target area focus could be in your body, in your mind, or in the feelings of energy in your body, around you. Everyone will look different in their poses. Some students will not feel much in the target area, so the practice then becomes one of maintenance or tapping into the subtle awareness of sensation, the little things we feel. In any yin stretch, there is a target area, maybe the glutes or the back. However, in truth, it would be impossible to isolate a stretch to just one area. When we stretch, one part, we stretch another. This idea is labeled biotensegrity. All the parts are working together to form a stable whole. 
The ligaments, muscle, and fascia are like the guy wires of the bones and give us shape and stability as if our body was internally holding hands. I love that image. If we pull on one wire, we move another. Without this internal connection, we would literally fall apart. We have been in this pose for three whole minutes. If you're interested in continuing for the whole five minutes, maybe take a little break, maybe readjust, and maybe just continue to settle. Noticing how you're feeling, giving yourself permission to go where you need to go. When you practice today, consider this internal connection and your capacity to love and move toward a greater whole like a raindrop moves to the sea. In your poses, note that the target area changes when you change. Resist the urge to practice out of habit and instead to experiment with your body. Sometimes bigger or deeper isn't better. And what is happening right now in your hips as you rest in your figure four on your back or your pigeon on your knees? Let's just take three more deep breaths here to finish our five minute hold. Moving slowly and carefully. If you're on your back, simply bringing your feet to the floor. If you're on your knees, walking yourself up and rolling onto that leg that's underneath you, stretching the legs out as you make your way back onto your spine to rest and feel the rebound of that amazing pose. Feel free to keep your knees bent for a while and eventually see what it feels like to find Shavasana. Allow the breath to move the body, softening on the exhale. After you've noticed what's happening in your hips, your knees, your low back, you might start to rock your feet or wiggle the toes. Feel free to bend the knees. Again, taking that quick inventory of your thoughts. How are you doing in the patience area today? <laughs> How's it feeling to slow down? Accept your thoughts just as they are, no judgment. As you slowly begin to mindfully make your way into the other side of this shape. And perhaps you found that being on your knees was too intense. Feel free to move into the pose on your back for the other side. If you like having that block up under your foot, you can slide it up onto the mat, take the ankle in front of the thigh and settle into your pose or draw the knees in or wrap the hand around the thigh. Knowing yourself is more than half of the game here. Of course, if you like to come up, you'll slowly roll over, come to a kneeling posture, and slowly bring this other knee forward toward that wrist and thumb. Slide the foot slightly over toward the other edge and walk the long leg back. Maybe choosing to stay slightly higher for a while and then settle down onto that hip, maybe using a blanket or a block any kind of props that would help you feel supported for our five minute hold. Noticing your breath, noticing those thoughts. What's it like in your body right now? Is there a way to help yourself? Releasing muscular effort, letting go. Here's a Chinese proverb, a quote for you here. 
Tension is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who we really are. <laughs> Tension is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who we really are. Yin works on gravity and the weight of the bones releasing. When we drop physical and muscular effort, the stretch is directed into the connective tissue. The, the physiology, physiological goal of yin is to gently stress the tissues so they can hydrate, thereby retaining their health and elasticity. For this to happen, the practice has to be one of giving up effort. The muscles work continuously to protect, but they also need to learn how to let go. Continue to check in with your breath, with your heart, with your joints, allowing yourself those micro changes as you watch your body settle. Why is letting go so tricky? The act of trying to let go is counterproductive. We must just let go. <laughs> Surrender to gravity and let your body be held generously by the earth. Offer all of your weight to the ground as you let go of muscular tension and relax. Feel your body expand into the support beneath you. Let go of the broad holding patterns and the buried fatigue. Feel an unburdening as the body lets go a little more and a little more. We've been here for about two and a half minutes. Halfway through our five minute hold, give yourself permission to change, to come out and in, to find a different pose, in fact, to practice patience. Where are you still holding tension? Stay a while, getting committed. Here's a, one of my favorite quotes by Pima Chodron. You are the sky, everything else is the weather. For the practice to be effective, the connective tissue needs prolonged, gentle stress. How long someone should stay in the pose depends on the strength of their connective tissue. If the tissues can't tolerate the stress, then we are all encouraged to come out of our poses. Over time, our capacity to stay will increase. Let's take three more deep breaths here to finish our five minute hold. Gently and slowly as you finish that third breath, start to allow yourself to roll onto your back. uncrossing your ankle if you've been on your back, slowly finding Shavasana, stretching out or keeping those knees bent as long as you like, breathing and noticing what you feel. the sensations start to disappear or maybe they just 
need to be moved, feel free to roll your toes and your ankles. Bend the knees and rock. Pull the knees into the chest and give yourself a hug. <laughs> Allowing your body to feel good and comfortable and fairly neutral once again. We are moving into our final shape, our Sphinx pose today. We're gonna roll over onto our side into seed pose. Hang out there for a breath or two, just letting your body notice that it's rolling over. And then starting to stretch the legs out, rolling onto your belly and moving yourself onto your mat. Feel free to use your elbows and then come down nice and flat into your belly down Shavasana. You can have your head to one side or your chin in your hands, or maybe even a block under your head. Now, if for any reason you know that you should not be doing a back bend today, then please skip this pose or just lay flat on your belly, or maybe pick a favorite pose that you would prefer. One of the best ways to stay on the belly is to just simply place that forehead on the block and start to let the back have that gentle curve. If you'd like to keep going deeper, you can start to walk your elbows onto the mat, moving them toward being underneath your shoulders. I like to bring the hands together, maybe into that unity mudra where all the fingertips touch and let them rest on the mat or the palms can come together or the fingers can link. And remember, this is our six minute hold. So <laughs> I would say have fun, which always makes me laugh because back bends are not fun. <laughs> I know. So let's see what we could do to make this a little more comfortable that it might mean placing your chin in your hands and just softening your shoulders. It might mean that you're already ready to walk your, your elbows forward more and get those ribs touching the mat. Anything you like that works for you. I also recommend sliding a blanket up under those hips to help support that lumbar curve. You have full permission to come in and out of the pose. As I just read to you, everyone's ten tension is different. Every connective tissue is different. So allow yourself permission to be different. As the pose progresses, we may watch certain states of mind arise and we, we may want to escape them. There may be physical discomfort or the mind may try to pull you toward the next moment. Yet, can we stay? In all our relationships and practices, we have the opportunity to get committed and to stay regardless of circumstance. So now watch for those moments of boredom, frustration, impatience and then let them arise and dissipate this is the practice each breath each new day is a chance to start again an opportunity to practice being committed whether your relationship is with a pose a person or yourself watch your states of mind arise and vow to stay and watch them disappear. Continually bring the breath down into your belly. Continue to soften and readjust as you need to. The last principle here in our yin practice is playing your edge, knowing your limits. The edge is where fear meets courage, challenge meets curiosity, desire meets will, and intensity meets softness. Pretty good. During the yin postures, we are asked to come to the point where we feel enough, 
mild to moderate sensation in the target area. This first point of challenge is referred to as the edge. The edge is not seen as extreme end range of motion, but a place that feels therapeutic both physically and emotionally. Pain is an indicator to look back, to, to back off to a milder edge rather than to override the sensation. Pain can include any, anything like agitation, anxiety, or overwhelming sensation like numbness or tingling or sharp shooting pain. We've been here for almost four minutes. We've got two minutes more to go. Take your time if you need a break, even if you need a child's pose, anything you need, you have permission to take it or be curious about what it feels like to stay only if you feel like that's healthy for you. <laughs> As the practice or the pose develops, we might find that the edge moves for us and we can adjust our body to go a little deeper into the pose. The following list highlights some of the approaches and themes relating to healthy edges. Discovering where your edge is. Edges versus being at the end range of motion. Working with easy, and challenging poses, physical, mental, and emotional edges, stepping off the edge, leaving your comfort zone. A measurement of how our spiritual practice is working is how we act slash react in poses on or off the mat when we are at our edge. Do you push past your limits, try to escape, or maybe look the other way when things are hard? Each of these patterns is valid, but temporary, and they disassociate us from what we are feeling. So the practice, when we are on the edge of our life, becomes to, becomes to stay embodied and present to the feelings, thoughts, and sensations. Learn and relearn not to abandon ourselves. So we can form a closer, more endearing relationship with every aspect of our humanity and all the sensations we are presented with. When we develop humbleness and become the observer of our reactions, habits, and patterns, their potency will start to dissolve and no longer have a grip on us. And in doing so, we find our edges soften and lose their sharpness. And that, my friends, is six minutes in Sphinx Pose. Slowly take your time coming down onto your belly. Letting yourself soften. Feel that ache in the low back and watch it disappear. Start thinking about where you'd like to end your practice today. It might be in child's pose. It might be rolling over on your side into seed pose, or it might be rolling all the way onto your back and into Shavasana. Just take your time. Stay on your belly, in fact, for your Shavasana if you prefer. Take some deep breaths, stretch into your back body. If you've rolled onto your spine, you might pull your knees into your chest and give yourself that counter pose. And we're just gonna rest. We have a few more minutes. Just noticing what you're feeling physically and emotionally. Watching your thoughts as they float by with no judgment.
Let's take three more deep breaths in stillness. And then begin to mindfully move toward a seated position, nice and slow. Feel free to move and stretch. You can leave your hands in your lap or bring them to your heart as we bow to our hearts and to our willingness to practice patience. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.